In this video, we're going to continue where we left off on our project. We've already integrated one JSON data stream, and now we're going to integrate a second data stream and see how we can combine this data together to create information. So a few steps. First of all, we need to create a DTO and also the client consuming code, which we'll do using QuickType as we did in the last video. And then once we've read the JSON data into objects, we need to use our programming to compare and, compare and combine the data that we're consuming. We're going to take advantage of something called a dictionary in .NET or a hash map, hash table in Java, because it offers us good growth performance as we increase the num amount of data that we're reading in, what we would call O to the 1 performance. So with that, let's jump right in. Our existing application reads in GPS data about specimens at the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Gardens. So that includes where the plant is located and also the genus and species and a unique identifier of the plant. So we already have that in our application. What we're going to add is this stream of data. This is plant data, not about a specific plant in a specific location, but general scientific data we can say about unique genus, species, and cultivar. So the first thing I'll do is select this and go to our friend QuickType and simply paste in there and let QuickType do its magic and generate a schema and also the c -sharp client code. Now a couple of things to point out here. You'll note by default the namespace is QuickType and if this is the second JSON stream that you're consuming, you won't be able to put this directly into Visual Studio because it's going to repeat a couple of words. The wor word welcome, which is a class, and then also serialize and converter. Now each class name within a namespace has to be unique. So if you already have a client generated by QuickType, you'll run in, in, into a collision there. So a couple things you can do. Uh, first of all, I renamed the namespace to QuickType Plants and you see that changes it up here. Also this thing called welcome, if you want, you could change this to something else like specimen, uh, something that describes your data transfer object or your POCO, something like that. Nonetheless, I'm gonna go ahead and take this, Control A, Control C, and save a little bit of time, I went ahead and created a, a plant client class. Uh, so if you're following along, just right click and say add and then say class, call it plant, plants client as I've done here, and then paste in what we got from QuickType. I've already done that, uh, so you can see it's all here just like so. So now I'm going to go to the code behind page, and this is where we are already consuming the stream of plants at the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden. So above that, I'm going to consume this stream of plant data. So I can mix the plant data with the individual plant specimens, and we can find out attributes of those specimens, like do they like water, do they like sun, so on and so forth. So let's start with this URL, uh, which is going to give us our uh, plant data. And then we're simply going to repeat a lot of what we did in our last video where we created this JSON client and we consume the data. So we can reuse web client and then download string. Pass in our endpoint and put it in quotes. We see this endpoint. I've specifically said uh, drought tolerant is on. I'm going to change that to wet tolerant is on, which for this particular endpoint is going to give us a series of plants that like water. So you see where we're going with this. We can look at the plants at the Cincinnati Zoo that like to be watered. Then we could integrate with some weather data to figure out when they need, need to be watered. Okay, so string, and we'll call it plants JSON, just like so equals web client download string, so get the raw data. Now let's parse this into some objects that we can read. So quick type plants, remember we made that namespace, quick type plants dot welcome dot from JSON, and we simply pass in that plants JSON string. Now look carefully as this IntelliSense pops up, and we can see this has a return type of quick type plants dot welcome with square brackets, which indicates we're getting an array of uh, plants. Uh, so, our data type is welcome, which is a class within the namespace QuickType Plants. I think of that class as like a city, and QuickType Plants as like a state, because remember, class names have to be unique within a namespace, uh, and so welcome is unique within QuickType Plants, but maybe not within another, you know, there might be a welcome in another namespace. In any case, square brackets to indicate an array, and then we're going to call it just welcome plants. 
like so. So at this point, we have parsed the JSON into an object. And uh, ooh, looks like I have a little capitalization to take care of here. We've, par we've parsed the data into an object, and now we can do some math on it. Now, here's the trick. This is being read as an array. And there are 5,200 plants. That, and again, plant, I mean genus, species, cultivar, unique. So scientific definition of a plant. Not, not a plant you can physically touch, but just definition of a plant. There are 5,200 plants and plant places. And for the water-loving plants, there are about 200 times 275 plants at the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden. So what that means is if I want to find out which of these specimens at the Cincinnati Zoo uh, are, are water-loving plants, they would each have to look for their record in this welcome array. And because it's an array, we have to essentially start at the front and work our way to the end. There's no easy way to determine where a particular record is within the array. So you see 200 times 275 means 55,000 operations, which is quite large. This is what we would call roughly O to the N, which means every time we add a new element, we uh, proportionally are increasing the time it takes to process all of the elements. If we looked at 275 plants and we look or specimens at the zoo and we compared them to 5,200 plant definitions, you see we very quickly get to a large number of operations. So something that we can use to make this a bit more efficient is called a dictionary in .NET or a hash map in Java and other programming languages as well. And what this does is it doesn't put items into an array in the order that it sees them, but it uses a key. And that key uh, typically has a hash code that can be computed from it. So some kind of unique number that can be computed from the key, uh, if the key's a string, if it's a number, if it's a more complex type, so on and so forth. So what we do with a hash map or a uh, dictionary is we use this computed number, and then we can do some simple division and figure out where this key would belong in an array. In other words, there's some math we can do on the object we're storing in a collection to determine where that object lives in the collection. And if, if that's the case, no matter how big the collection is, it's going to be the same amount of time to access that individual unit. This is what we call O to the 1 performance. So to do this, I need to move all of these plants from this traditional array into a dictionary. So we'll start up above by declaring the dictionary. We'll use the uh, interface type as the variable type, so iDictionary. And we'll give it generic identifiers, let's say long, and then quick type plants.welcome. And we'll call this one all plants equals new dictionary. So on the object side, we're actually going to use a, a, a concrete class, not an interface. And once again, on the dictionary side, uh, we're going to say long and then quick type plants dot welcome. Open and close friend, terminate with the semicolon and save. So this is our faster to access dictionary. So now I'm going to say for each quick type plants dot welcome and we'll call it plant and welcome welcome plants like so open curly close curly I'm going to say all plants dot add and we'll say okay what are we going to use as a key well let's see plant dot ID take a look at that the plant ID is a, a, a long, or actually it's just an int, but it's the unique identifier that plant places use uses to identify this plant. So you see for bald cypress, that's a 489. Uh, for lace bark pine, it's a 137. And here on the detail page for lace bark pine, we see that plant ID of 137. So that makes for a good key because we know it's going to be unique. So we'll go ahead and expand this again. So we're going to add the plant ID and we are going to associate this with a plant. Okay, and terminate with the semicolon. Now, let's go down a bit and look at the specimens. And, and currently, we're doing some validation and we're returning the specimens if everything's valid. If not, we do something where we say, uh, okay, there was an error and we just return empty specimens. Let's add a bit more logic to this. I'm going to add a list of specimen objects again, and we're gonna call this water me specimens equals new list and then specimen.
and open and close paren to uh, create the object out of that. Now, uh, what we'll do is for this, uh, for the data we're passing to the web page, we're going to change this to water me specimens, kind of like a sub list of the grander specimen list. And then let's populate that collection by shaking hands with all of our specimens. We'll start with that. So for each, and then we're going to say specimen, specimen, in specimens. So uh, we look up above here and we'll see that uh, specimens is the collection that we get from our specimen JSON stream that we've already consumed in, in a previous video. Uh, now what we're going to do is put an if test in here to say if all plants dot contains key specimen dot plant ID. I'll explain that in just one moment. Then we'll say uh, water me specimens dot add and specimen just like so. Okay, what's going on up here? Well, let's see all plants remember that's the dictionary that we created above and in a dictionary the key has to be unique and the key here is the plant ID. Now down in our specimen stream, which we're getting here, all of the specimens uh, are have a plant ID, which tells them what plant they're related to. So once again, specimen, something you can touch, a tree you planted in your front yard. Let's say it's a Fuji apple. Well, Fuji apple, we know certain things about the Fuji apple at the scientific level. Uh, the genus is Malus, the species is Domestica, the cultivar is Fuji. We know about how tall it will grow, so on and so forth, and its watering needs. So these specimens are uh, individual plants, and then the plant ID is that scientific definition that says this is a plant that likes water. And when we finish this, uh, we come up with only the plants that like water. Now, the nice thing about this is because all plants is a dictionary, to do this contains key look lookup, it's just essentially doing a hash code equation on this plant ID, and that's telling it uh, where it's located within the dictionary, and that's what gives us that O to the 1 performance. No matter how big the dictionary is, it's able to do a bit of hash code math on this and get a pretty good idea of where this uh, plant lives in the dictionary, so it doesn't have to shake hands with every single plant, but it can go directly to this plant with this plant ID. So a very efficient operation. Now I ran this, and let's take a look at the results. We know that there are normally about 275 specimens at the Cincinnati Zoo. Uh, we take a look at this. This is a much smaller list of plants. There may be about a couple dozen on here. And as I look at these Helleborus, Serviceberry, um, Silver Maple, Bee Balm, Phlox, Iris, these certainly are plants that do like water. Now, snap to breakpoint. We'll go ahead and refresh the page. We see the breakpoint hits right where we were just working. I'll go ahead and choose F10 as we read in the plant data. Let's see, here we go. Here's the raw plant data. And now we say welcome plants. Okay, this is the data that's parsed into a series of objects. And now we're doing one operation to go ahead and populate our dictionary with these plants. It's going to do this for every plant we've received, so I kind of want to fast forward over this. So what I'll do is I'll set another breakpoint uh, on a line lower, and I'll go ahead and choose F5, which will complete what I'm doing and run to this next breakpoint. Now with this breakpoint, we're getting the specimen objects. We're validating the schema. Luckily, the schema is valid. And now we're saying, okay, is this specimen, does it belong to a plant that likes water? If no, we simply skip. And you see that the vast majority, well, all plants like water. We're looking for ones that are specifically like a lot of water. So the vast majority are just normal and don't have high water needs. I could put a conditional breakpoint on here, or I could just go ahead and add a breakpoint like so. And we can confirm when I choose F5 that we're eventually going to hit that breakpoint. And when we do hit that breakpoint, let's take a look at the specimen. Sure enough, it's the Linton Rose, the Helleborus. F5 again, we'll get another specimen, F5, F5. Keep doing this. I can eventually just uh, be satisfied with this and disable the breakpoint, choose F5, and let the page render once more. So what have we done in this video? We integrated some JSON screen, uh, streams. We created a DTO and a client with QuickType. And then once we read it into a series of objects, we were able to use just normal programming and a little bit of magic with a dictionary or a hash map to combine two data streams together. I hope this video has been helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.